Today's video is sponsored by Boroughbound. Designing cities is so difficult. If you're a lazy DM like, well, me, I generally just provide my players with a few key locations, and the rest of the city more or less doesn't exist. Be better than me and use the breathtaking cities that Boroughbound creates. For each city release, you'll get top-down battle maps covering the entire town, so your players can see the city streets and not just imagine them. Unique variations of our maps so that you can GM multiple versions of each city. Comprehensive setting PDFs that provide backstory, NPCs, quest prompts, unique new mechanics. Beautiful art and illustrations, including character portraits and tokens, alternate views of the city, and realistic in-universe documents. Evocative music to establish the mood and character of each city. Assets that are Foundry VTT ready, so all you need to do is plug and play. All of the cities come with both exteriors and interiors, so all the key buildings are mapped out, from the rooftop to the basement. Use these to run heists, thoroughly explore taverns, or just to loot the goods from the local manor. Click the link in the description below to become a patron now, and discover these incredible cities and incorporate them into your game. How my DM's wife kicked me out of his pay-to-play game. About a year back I needed to take a break from DMing my own game and decided to look around at some of the pay-to-play games across a few different sites I frequented. One was a DM with a lot of experience that was starting a new campaign after his previous one fell apart to scheduling. I paid my fee, joined in with him and a few of his friends who were also paying, and his wife. Session Zero was free as he laid the groundwork for the campaign and explained homebrew rules, homebrew setting, and laid out what the world was like. I ended up going Tiefling Bard, after being warned that tieflings are a kill-on-sight type of species because they're actual demons that escaped hell. I knew the risks and what would come of it if I was caught, that the party may also join in on killing me. Session 1 we're shipwrecked on an island and it's pretty standard stuff. We get banned together to survive with my character wrapped up in baggy clothes, goggles and a thick turban to hide most of his skin and defining features, and deceptions is way past any attempt to find out about his heritage. All except for DM Wife, who says she knows what he is despite failing her insight role three times, and starts trying to expose me. I continue to evade her and soon she goes to full-on trying to grapple me. Worth noting that the DM wife is playing a one-armed artificer who hasn't learned how to make a prosthetic yet, and she fails every attempted grapple against me because they're at a disadvantage, and my dex is high to keep my stealth and sleight of hand high. I tell a story of how it's against my religion to show my face outside of my home. The rest of the party buys it and stops her from continuing to try and disrobe me. We make camp with the few survivors of the shipwreck we're in and volunteer to find a safer place for camp, as well as look for what is causing the magical storm. A bit of time and we locate a cave and clear it of the monsters inside to move the survivors to. Moving in deeper, we start to encounter undead guardians of some lost civilization. We beat them and the DM wife finds a magical ring that lets her learn a stored memory from the ring. She uses it to solve a puzzle we encounter in the next room, then demands that she be the one to keep it. No one really argues with her and we move on. Once we get deep enough in the cave, we encounter a storm creature that was left behind to protect the lost civilization. I try to talk to the creature and persuade it to end its task, but it merely gets it to go easier on us when the fight breaks out. We beat it with a bit of a struggle, and I notice it drops an orb of some kind. I pick it up and the DM wife demands that she gets to keep it. I tell her that she got to keep the last one and tell her that I would be holding it for the group to use after I attuned to it first. She starts getting ready to cast a spell on me, and the rest of the party that I've been healing and keeping safe tell her that it's one thing to argue and another to jump to attacking someone. She relents and with the storm creature defeated, we stop the magical storm and are able to contact a passing ship for aid. On this new ship, on our way to the next port, things start to come to a head. I attune to the orb, and it turns out to be a homebrew orb of weather control that resets at dawn. I use it once to put the wind into our sails and inform the group of what it does. No one really wants it for themselves and they trust me with it. Well, I say no one, but the DM wife demands that I hand it over to her because my kind shouldn't be trusted with magical artifacts. I simply tell her I won't give it to her until she starts acting polite to me, and once again she threatens violence, and once again the rest of the group defends me. She later tries to steal it from me twice, and I don't relent but I do offer an alternative. She wants the orb so badly she'll have to trade for it. I'll get the ring for one day, and in that time I get the memory storing ring she took for that time. She gets a legendary magic item and I get a common item, seemingly a bad deal. She spends the day studying its magic and eventually learns its origin, but not how it was made or how to make it herself. I spend my time on a prank we will get back to later. When it comes time to trade back I give the ring and she starts taunting me and says that she has no plans to return the orb to my kind. I shrug and tell her it's her loss and walk away. 
When I'm away, she notices the ring has a memory stored in it, and of course she jumps at the chance to use it as blackmail against me, so she uses the ring to see it. What she watches in the memory is me in a mirror, transforming to look exactly like her via disguised self, and going around with my bardic charm flirting with all the sailors on the ship. I don't perform or promise any act, just flirt and flutter my eyelashes and make myself a general nuisance and distraction to the sailors. Of course she comes chasing after me and the other party members have to stop her from killing me. I tell her if she has that much anger about a simple prank, to just perform a prank of her own against me. I'm still thinking this is anger in character at this point of course. She decides she does want to prank me in return, and of course she escalates to the nth degree by trying to permanently mute my character, by trying to pour acid in my mouth as well as blind me by putting it in my eyes while I'm asleep. She fails her stealth roll, however, and I catch her in the act of what seems like attempted murder. I try to run and she starts casting harming spells on me. I do, however, raise the alarm and this results in her being put in the brig for the remainder of the trip at sea. We do make it to land, however, and I'm ready to simply leave the party and I say my farewells, but one member states that it's safer for us to work in a group and we could really make some money if we stick together. I decide to put it on a trial run and join them, most of it just being RP dialogue. DM wife is vehemently against me joining them and tells them that she would continue to try and kill me if I did. The rest of the group says that she shouldn't threaten people like that, and tell her that she doesn't have to join them if she doesn't want to. At about this point, I start to feel bad about how things are going between our characters, and I send her a message. It's along the lines of, hey, I hope you know any rudeness from my character is just roleplay. I think you're great and your character is awesome and blah blah blah. Basically just trying to make sure what's going on between our characters is in character, and not her hating me for whatever reason. That message ends up being left on red, however. After one more session where the DM wife kills two random NPCs, because they didn't give her exactly what she wanted when she wanted it, she ends up screaming at the DM and storming out a game. DM understandably ends game for the night. I get a message from said DM later that day saying how he really thinks I'm cool and how he would love to play with me again, but he can't have me in the game anymore because his wife threatened to end the game if he didn't. I was just kind of shocked by it and really didn't know how to respond. Apparently later learned from the friends of the DM we played with, this was the second time she did this, and they ended up leaving the game after that. She apparently will throw tantrums about the game and go without talking to her husband for days if he does something she doesn't like. The rest of the players also half the time sided with me, not because I had good arguments, but either just to make her mad or just to snub her. Understandably, I decided not to rejoin that group for any activities down the line. User Basketball Pope sums this story up perfectly. The nerve to charge people to be involved in their wife's wish fulfillment fantasy. I don't have any experience with pay to play games. Has anyone here participated? Or hosted? What was your experience like with it? Would you consider pay to play a better level of gameplay? Or was it a giant ripoff and you decided to run your games because of the experience? Please share your pay to play D&D stories in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.